Hi everyone, and thanks for checking out my uh, channel. I'm going to go through the market uh, and look at uh, potential planes, having a look at what happened over the past week uh, and see what kind of trades we could put uh, moving forward. So starting with the WTI crude oil, still showing very um, powerful bear, uh, bullish um, power really it did break quite nicely the uh, 54 uh, level as no reach near uh, 60 so i've attempted a short position here just to to trade some technical uh, bonds on this but honestly it may actually not happen but i'm looking at something like this a retrace down to 55 just to cool off indicators as we can see on the four hours we had the first divergence uh, on that spike that did actually go uh, here on 59 and did manage to push higher which is quite common on WTI uh, and now we are, I'm waiting to see the reaction here should we actually not get any pullback significant pullback here would we'll definitely exit that short and not insist would we'll not buy of course because this is moving too high and definitely uh, dangerous now but if we look at the court report they're still moving with solid open interest in the move up um, Still, edges are adding to the short position. There's really nothing bearish here. Uh, Match money is still adding uh, long, but they're probably entering now some quite exposed uh, position where they have to take profit at some point. So, anyway, um, definitely that's a buy zone. 55, should we drop that low? 54, 55 is you not know, really safe uh, buy area. But I think a short can be attempted here, might just hold that position, but uh, it's uh, not something really too big and I will not insist should it not actually go my way. Um, now looking at natural gas, uh, the picture is a little bit clearer. We have a clean uh, reversal pattern uh, in place. Uh, still, I'm a little bit cautious with short position. I did attempt one um, last week at uh, $3, dollars slightly lower, I think. Uh, but exited as we reached to uh, 85 somewhere. Uh, the reason for this was that divergence here on that spike did actually clear at that level. So it was a bit risky to keep holding. Even if that four hours divergence here to me is a potential reversal pattern, uh, we can see the rising wedge as well between that limit and that limit. That is showing should it actually break potential drop to uh, 240. Uh, and that's what I'm aiming to trade. So what I think could be happening uh, because we're still having some cold weather out there. We could have a push up uh, that could actually get as high as 3.15 uh, before we actually get down for good. So we're still having enough room on the RSI to set the divergence uh, potentially somewhere there or even push it higher into the overbought uh, area. So that's giving us a solid move at least to 3.15. I will not play that one uh, long. I think it's uh, quite risky, but it's a possibility definitely. And we'll be trading short, accumulating from that level above uh, three. I think it's relatively safe. If we look at the code report, once again, uh, the manage money has been quite neutral. Uh, they did actually reduce the exposure long and short, uh, still holding significant long, so they have enough to actually take this one uh, down. Uh, and as we can see, also neutral in terms of the edges. So really, uh, apart from the uh, retail traders that are still piling uh, here on the long uh, positions, I believe that most of the big players are not actually um, expecting anything moving much higher than $3. So that will be definitely a nice um, short entry, short trade uh, for that move down at least three, fifth, three, uh, 240 sorry, as a target. But uh, keeping in mind, we still have that gap open at 2 point 10 which will be of course a game uh, changer because that will actually uh, show that the, um, the market is ready to move much higher much lower but uh, still uh, at the moment it looks uh, short and uh, bullish uh, and i'm waiting to uh, to settle a more uh, a bigger short position for the for the longer time time frame uh, trade now interesting uh, enough we're we'll looking at the precious metal because there's some divergence that's happening at the moment um, and it's especially obvious on gold that is unable to actually break above um, 1950 and it's still inside that triangle that's compressing um, one roughly 1800 so that's quite concerning uh, if we look at the picture uh, that it could be it could be a reversal that's an inverted uh, 
cup handle pattern that's usually quite reliable because we're here on the daily chart and that could be something like this so if that one is breaking down uh, the target i have some times ago for gold would be back on the table and it's actually quite low uh, right on the trend line it's uh, 1500 so i know this is it looks really uh, low especially in that environment when we're having money printing and stimulus and everything but that's what the chart is telling us so it cannot actually go against that um, and of course a break below uh, 1770 will be quite catastrophic i believe for gold now what is very interesting is that if we look at silver it's a different configuration altogether uh, and we can see that silver is actually building up quite nicely under 30 for potential breakout so the picture is actually completely uh, reversed with some sort of a cup handle uh, either we are still inside the cup and we're going to draw later on some really tight uh, handle here that's a possibility um, but yeah, uh, if we look here, uh, it's building up to the upside. So I'm more inclined to actually buy silver on the dips. Uh, potentially at the moment, we're talking about slightly below 26 and uh, look at gold as a short uh, opportunity should we actually get higher around uh, 1900. So it's quite a divergence between the two. They're usually moving together, but now they're diverging uh, slowly. Uh, one expe expectation I think is that Gold is losing definitely the safe haven, and, and since it's actually uh, working as a sort of a protection in difficult time or instability, and we are getting a bit more stable now with the virus and everything, uh, that might be the reason why gold is struggling, why silver is more industrial related to electrical vehicles and things like this. That could be actually potentially explaining the difference between the two. They're quite a splitting in terms of the what's the reason moving this market so uh, keeping an eye on this but definitely silver to me is a buy um, about around 26 and same goes with platinum uh, there's a little bit of a divergence on the daily following that uh, recent break of above 1100 uh, so i believe a revisit of that level is possible and since platinum is very volatile I cannot exclude entirely to resume the move down to 1000 for a final retest that would be a really nice um, potential entry that would clear up that divergence also but still cannot exclude the continuation to the upside from here but that will be without me as i think it's uh, just simply too risky uh, to, to trying to fomo in uh, on that kind of market uh, looking at the court report you see platinum is definitely bullish large money keep adding long positions um, the retail traders are attempting to actually short that market and of, of course quite um, often that doesn't work that way uh, if we look now at uh, silver it's also um, well, it's slightly uh, bearish as the match money did actually add short uh, we have in the retail traders are adding long so it could actually potentially have some more pullback i think 26 we might revisit uh, but uh, yes that's nothing i believe catastrophic for this uh, and of course on gold still very much neutral for the match money uh, and pretty much everybody so there's no um, <coughs> good or really strong um, buying action uh, on gold not selling either but i think the risk of the breakdown is definitely there so i'm careful with any uh, long position on gold and now finally looking at uh, coffee it's still trading inside that's really big uh, pattern i'm looking at for quite some time so that channel is actually much shorter it's actually ending uh, here in uh, december uh, but we can see it's still respecting it we broke it uh, last week we're testing it reject it straight away so i believe now for coffee we are very likely to break lower and i doubt we are going to actually move uh, above 123 anytime soon so we could have uh, some drop that could actually go as low as uh, 110 closing that gap that's still open uh, and should we go that way we're still somehow inside that uh, pattern that's still consolidating uh, under uh, 135 uh, expecting a really big uh, breakout but that will be delayed uh, to later on uh, in march or maybe april uh, until we can actually get potentially much higher level but that's building up quite nicely despite the quite uh, bearish price action we've seen recently but uh, i think we need patience to build up a long position that will pay off big uh, when we get uh, to that level from 110 
up to potentially 180. That's a really big move to the upside, uh, but we need to be patient and not jump into it uh, too quickly. Um, looking at the quote report for coffee, it's still relatively bearish. The management is still didn't swap um, to accumulating long, so to me, it will keep putting pressure to the downside. Retail traders still uh, buying and they're getting squeezed out as usual on coffee. Uh, so again, staying away, but I'm looking at that level very uh, closely. Uh, 110 that could be a very interesting uh, entry point. So yeah, that's about it uh, for the coming week. Um, also, I think uh, if we look at uh, Bitcoin, it could be very interesting to see what will happen next. I um, can quickly have a look at it. Um, I'm not holding it anymore, exiting at uh, 48, the previous long position. Uh, but very interestingly, we're having a divergence that actually uh, showing here on the daily. Let's just clear up this. Uh, we are really near the target we had uh, for that break of that uh, small uh, cup handle that didn't actually have any handle but the cup. Target was uh, 51, uh, we are really near to that. Uh, so I think that pattern can be considered uh, completed, but now we're having that really big divergence here on the daily with some rejection. Uh, first uh, evening star we got on that spike, uh, did manage to actually push higher, but uh, I think it's extremely risky to actually trade this to the upside. Uh, our hourly chart, we're still having uh, bullish uh, um, break uh, out that we got to 50 drop back to test the previous uh, the water line uh, and then the target would be actually sitting at 53 but because of that divergence i'm not interested in entering at that level the risk is too big for a sharp uh, reversal i could actually see at least um, a retest of 41 that could be the buy uh, the buy zone a bit safer we need to retest that level i believe that was previous resistance went through a bit too far uh, or too fast i think and it need to get retested so short term we could have that move to the upside uh, 53 then a drop back down to 41 before we do actually continue to the upside a uh, little bit some cool off is definitely required to avoid some sharp uh, setup. So yeah, that's all for uh, tonight. Um, hope you uh, liked the video. Um, and uh, if you want, you can still join my WhatsApp group where I post a trade I take and some advice. Um, yeah, so you free, you uh, feel free to join. Uh, send me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. I wish you a good uh, trading and a good week. Cheers, bye.